factorials. Factorial of the number is the product of natural numbers from one to n, which means n factorial is equal one times two. It's a product of natural numbers times n minus two n minus 1 and n. So natural numbers are uh, the numbers that don't have 0, don't have uh, negative numbers. Let me show you. And the whole positive numbers without 0. If 0 is included, then those are whole numbers. So those are uh, natural numbers. One more time. Factorial is the product of natural uh, numbers from 1 to n. So, for example, if I need to get a factorial for, I don't know, 1, So it's going to be only one, right? Because I don't have continuation. Factorial of two, it's going to be one times two. Factorial of three, it's going to be one times two times three. And let's say factorial four, it's equal one times two times three times four. So if you multiply all these numbers, you are going to get 24. Here you are going to get six, here you're going to get two. Now, and you can continue. Now, uh, if you are wondering what if you have big number, let's say 256 factorial, well, that's one can go crazy, right? To writing down all these numbers, somebody will call 911 for you. <laughs> if I see you writing all numbers till 256. Um, this, uh, with such qu the cases, usually when you use in operations, you don't have to open all the way. So if uh, with a little bit patience, in a few minutes, I'm going to do operations and you will see how to deal with such cases. Okay. Uh, like I said, numbers can be only used only natural numbers. That means you cannot have negative number. Okay, let me use uh, our color. 4.25, let's say, factorial. You cannot have decimal, even if it's positive. Okay, and you cannot have whole number, even if it's negative. And a uh, negative number, even if it's whole number. So you cannot have it. All right. So if I keep going, factorial 5, 6, so I can summarize them in the format of um, uh, general, in the, in the general form, not summarize. It's just I can put in general form, which means, so if I have, Factorial of n, it's going to be 1 times 2 times 3, right? Times 4, let's say, okay, enough. 3 dots. And then before I put here n, I want to put n minus 2, right? Getting closer to n, n minus 1 and n. Yes, if I open from 1 to n. Let's say if my uh, n is, uh, for example, n is, uh, let's say, 20, right? So this is going to be, if this is 20, so this is going to be 18, this is going to be 19, right? Okay. Um, for n minus 1 factorial,
it's going to be 1 times 2 times 3 times 4, let's say. It doesn't have to be necessarily 4, 3. It also can be enough. So multiply. So you're going to have n minus 2 and n minus 1. Yes? And for n plus 1 factorial, we're going to have 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times, okay, n minus 2, n minus 1 times n, right, and n plus 1. In that case, this is how it's going to look. Let me, I want to fit it on the page. There we go. Okay, before I solve this, start solving a couple of examples, uh, let me uh, tell you uh, where do we use factorial, what for do we need? So let's assume you are going to the dealership and um, uh, let me see. You have, uh, it, it's, uh, it's um, the dealership where you have five, six uh, the brands of different cars. Let's say Volkswagen, you, know, you, you have Toyota, Mercedes, and blah, blah, blah. So you want to buy, um, for example, three cars for business, right? So one, let's say you want to buy Mercedes for important uh, meetings uh, and you want to buy a cheaper car for daily driving around and so on. So, uh, and there are 10 cars, right? Total 10, 10 types of cars, okay? And out of these 10 cars, you are going to choose uh, three cars. And it can be all kinds of three different cars out of these 10. Which combination of these three cars is going to be? It can be um, uh, BMW, Mercedes, and uh, Honda. It can be, uh, I don't know, Mercedes and uh, Civic uh, at, uh, Honda, and it can be Chevrolet, and, and so on. God knows. But total, out of these total three, you can choose it. And how many combinations, how many choices uh, you have to choose from? And that's when factorial um, will step in. Uh, another example is, let's say we are, um, uh, it's, uh, some people like uh, uh, the, um, car race, right? So they are participating uh, 100 cars and all, only three are going to get uh, the prize. So which combination of three is going to win, right? Out of this hundred. So using um, factorial, you can calculate and you will see how many thousands of uh, combinations of free cars out of this hundred can be uh, created. So those are examples of where we can use um, our um, uh, this topic factorial and lastly let's say a very basic example that everybody knows nowadays locks the, the nowadays locks they don't have just key they some locks have the code right you are uh, going to memorize your code and order of this code right and we have to choose this uh, uh, four codes out of ten right you want to know how many choices you have uh, out of the, uh, the four codes can make, how many combinations can make. So it's four out of 10, and that's again factorial will help you to identify. So approximately you got an idea. All right, said that. Now let's do a couple of um, um, basic examples, but me, um, until then, uh, I want to uh, tell you the very important um, uh, case of factorial, and that is 
factorial of zero is equal one. A lot of people are wondering why factorial zero is equal one, and I can put it here, factorial first one. Look, factorial 1 is equal 1 and factorial 0 is equal 1. Where from it is coming? Well, let's see. I'm going to show you. We just looked into that and we know that n plus 1 factorial is equal n factorial times n plus 1. Oh, I didn't, uh, I don't have this case. Okay, then let me explain then where from it's coming. So, um, if I put the factorial n plus 1, that's going to be equal. Here it is. We have 1 times 2 times 3 times 4. And this time I'm opening all the way till n. I'm not typing n minus 2, n minus 1. It's in, entirely up to us how far we will uh, put this general format. n factorials, and then I need n plus 1, so I can multiply by n plus 1, right? Because I don't want to put uh, all the way from 1 to n, all these numbers, so n I will include under factorial, and then just uh, add to it n plus 1, and I will get n plus 1 factorial, right? Just like here. Correct? Okay. Now, let's take our n is equal 0. If n is equal 0, what's going to happen? 0 plus 1 factorial. Why am I taking different colors every time? Hold on. There. 0 plus 1 factorial is equal uh, 0 factorial times 0 plus 1. Right? Okay. So what do we get here? 0 plus 1 on the left side, we are getting factorial of 1. Here we are getting 0 plus 1, I'm getting 1 times 0 factorial. So from here I can write down that 1 factorial is equal 0 factorial, correct? And we know that factorial uh, of 1 is 1, correct? Okay, so we are getting 1 is equal 0, or let me write down uh, vice versa, so that 0 factorial is equal 1. And here is your proof. So we have 0 factorial is 1, and factorial of 1 is 1. All right, now let's uh, solve some examples. So example number 1. Let's assume we have factorial 100 dividing by factorial 99. Remember I told you a little bit patience and you will find out. Nobody's going open from 1 to 100. But what I'm going to do, I can I write down a factorial of 100 is equal factorial of 99 and then times 100, right? So I'm going to write down here. And why I open 99? I could write down factorial 98 times 99 times 100. I could do that. Why I didn't do it? I don't need it. And why I choose 99? Because here in denominator I have 99. So I can simplify. Make sense? So 99 factorial times 100 and divide it by 99 factorial. Yes, canceling this, and I'm getting 100. Okay. Example number two. Seventy over 69 factorial plus 49 factorial 
over 48 factorial. And that is equal. 70, I'm going to write down factorial of 69 because I have denominator 69 times 70. Here I have 69 factorial, right? And then plus 49, I'm opening, uh, I, I put factorial 48 and then here is 49 and divided by 48 factorial and 69 is canceling, 69, 48 is canceling with 48. And the answer we are getting is 70 plus 49 and we are getting 119. Okay, next. Factorial eight minus factorial six over factorial five. Okay, so factorial 8, since I have here factorial 6, I'm going to separate factorial 6 from 8, so I can take common factor out. Yes? Oh, I'm sorry, here it's supposed to be 55. So, let me open, I'm getting factorial 6 times 7, and times 8, right? Because we to total have 8. And minus factorial 6. Okay? In denominator, what do we have? 55. All right. Now, do we have common factor, factorial 6? Take out. We get 7 times 8 minus 1 over... 55 and we are getting here factorial 6 times it's going to be 55 7 times 8 56 minus 1 55 divided by 55 and we are getting the answer factorial 6 which is going to be 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5 times 6 and that is equal 720. And yes, I calculated before, so not to start in, uh, uh, calculating right now here. Okay, 720. Next, uh, problem number four. What do we have? Uh, factorial 6 plus factorial 7 over factorial 5. What can we do? I'm going to release factorial 5 in numerator. And I'm going to do very easy because I did already in problem number 3. So it's going to be factorial 5 times 6 plus factorial 5 times 6 times 7. Yes? Okay. And here I have factorial 5. So I have factorial 5 comes out and I have 6 plus... 6 times 7. And this is dividing by factorial 5. This is gone. And we are getting 6 plus 42. 48. Next one. Factorial 6. Let's take 5. We already used 6. times factorial 3 and divided factorial 7. Okay? So what we're going to do here? Since this is multiplication, I can't open 5 and get to 7, but I can get 7 to 5, right? I'm going to write down 7 times 6 and then times factorial 5 factorial 5 and factorial 3. This is gone. And we are getting factorial 3 times 2 times 1. And here we are getting 7 times 6. 
where three times two, it's six, right? On the top, I will cancel with the six at the bottom. And my answer is going to be one over seven. Okay, let's move to calculate factorial in more general form. x plus 1 factorial over x minus 1 factorial. And what do we have? x plus 1, I'm going, since I have in denominator x minus 1, right? x minus 1 factorial is obviously smaller than x plus 1 factorial. Therefore, I'm going to bring, open up x plus 1 factorial, bring to the level of x minus 1. So I can cancel, right? So x plus 1, it's going to be x plus 1 factorial, x plus 1 factor, uh, the x plus 1 times x and times x minus 1 factorial. So I'm opening on till x plus 1. Here I have x minus 1 factorial. So this is going to be gone. And I have x times x plus 1. Well, let's do more advanced. Okay, well, one more. Let me do one more. We'll practice one more before uh, we move and do a different one. So I have n factorial over n plus 1 factorial. Now, in this case, n plus 1 is greater than m n, right? Therefore, I will add at the open n plus 1 factorial. So here I have n factorial. So n plus 1 factorial, I can open as a n factorial times n plus 1, right? And I'm going to get this is gone. And the answer is going to be 1 over n plus 1, and we are good, okay? I hope you understand why I'm doing n plus 1 factorial is n, because let's say my, um, let's take some easy numbers. Uh, let's say uh, my x plus 1 factorial is 11 factorial 11, which means x is going to be 10, right? So that's going to be factorial 10, right? Previous number is 10, and then times 11. So this that's this is my n, and this is will be uh, or x, okay? And this is will be x plus 1. Yes? Okay. Next one, what if I have n factorial over n minus 2 factorial? What then? Very easy. Since n is greater than n minus 2, then I'm opening my n. And n is going to be n times n minus 1. And I'm going to stop opening at n minus 2. And take a guess why I opened all the way till n minus 2. Of course, you understand, because in denominator, I have n minus 2. I'm canceling. And my answer is n times n minus 1. Okay. Next interesting case. x squared minus 4 factorial, x minus 2, x squared minus 5 factorial. What I'm going to do in this case, so x squared minus 4 and x squared minus 5, since both of them are factorials, x squared, x squared minus 4 is greater than x squared minus 5, right? Because you subtract less. Okay? So that's going to be x squared minus 4 
times x squared minus 5 factorial. Okay? And here this x minus 2 times x squared minus 5 factorial. Okay. Canceling. And I'm getting x squared minus 4 here is x minus 2 and x squared minus 4 i can open x minus 2 x plus 2 right here i have x minus 2 we are canceling this is formula a squared minus b squared x squared minus 4 and the answer is x plus 2 all right Next interesting case is going to be n factorial squared dividing by n minus 1 factorial n plus 1 factorial. Okay, so what do we have here? Since I have n factorial squared, I'm going to separate them, n factorials times n factorials. And here I have n minus 1 factorial, n plus 1 factorial, right? Okay, this is equal. I'm going to open one n factorial I'm leaving alone. Second one I'm opening, it's going to be n times n minus 1 factorial because I have here n minus 1 factorial and n, uh, n plus 1 factorial I'm going to open it's going to be n plus 1 times n factorial so n plus 1 factorial I opened is n plus 1 times n factorial okay so what do we have here n squared is i mean n factorial gum with n factorial n minus one factorial with n minus one factorial and as a result we get n over n plus one okay now let's do subtraction, which will cover multiplication also. So we have um, 1 over n plus 1 factorial minus n squared plus 5n over n plus 3 factorial. Okay, let's solve it. We are going to have 1 over n plus 1 factorial minus n squared plus 5n. Here I have n plus 1 factorial and then n plus 2 times n plus 3, right? Okay. Bringing to common denominator, it's going to be n plus 1 factorial n plus 2 n plus 3. Common denominator. Which means this 1, I have to multiply by, since I have n plus 1, only factorial, so I have to multiply by n plus 2 and n plus 3. Here I don't multiply second fraction, I don't touch it because I have the whole denominator. So, n plus 2 times n plus 3. Let me write down n plus 2 times n plus 3 and minus n um, squared plus 5n. 
okay this is going to be equal n plus 1 factorial n plus 2 n plus 3 and I get here n at the n times n is n squared plus 3n 2 times n is 2n, and 2 times 3 is plus 6. And minus, oops, here is mistake. It has to be minus y. Why it has to be minus, guys? Because when you have negative sign in front of fraction, you treat this negative sign as a negative sign in front of parentheses, and which means you're going to flip every single sign in or the in the expression so negative n square was here positive became negative now um, plus 5n will become minus 5n because of this negative sign right here because of this oops not this one negative sign right here Ooh. let me use this one of this negative sign so uh, minus n squared and minus 5 n okay let's cancel right and left this with this okay 3 n plus 2 n 5 n and I'm canceling with negative 5 n right um, well, n plus 1 factorial times n plus 2 times n plus 3, I can still uh, bring it back right down as a n plus 3 factorial, right? And here I will have 6. And that is going to be our answer. Okay. Now let's expand this topic uh, of uh, factorials. Factorials um can be for even numbers two four six eight uh, ten and blah 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 and it can be factorials of odd numbers one three five seven nine eleven thirteen and so on okay for even numbers even factorials let's say i'm writing down factorial of six for even one and we put double exclamation sign. That's a factorial for uh, the even factorials. So it's going to be equal because I can't start from 1. I'm starting from 2. 2 times 4 times 6. Okay? Okay, next. If I have factorial of um, 7 for odd factorial let me write down even odd so we are going to do free uh, exclamation sign that's for odd factorial which means you know it's going to be one times three times five you can go further because uh, next odd number including seven, seven including, but not for further. Now, here is interesting question. I don't know if it's crossing your mind or not, but I'm going to show you so you would know and won't get lost if you see that. Factorial of seven, double factorial of seven, which means I we are looking for even uh, sequence, sequence of even numbers. That's still going to be what? 2 times 2, 4 times 6, right? Which is going to be equal to factorial 6 with double, uh, double factorial of 6. Yes? Okay. So, let's write down the general form of even and odd factorials. 
General form of even factorials, even meaning divide can be dividable by two. That's mean I'm putting two n. So any number multiplied by two, you get even. Any number. 17 times two, 34, got even. So for even factorial, and I put double factorial, so we can, we know it's for even one. It's gonna be two times four times six, dot, dot, dot. It's gonna be two n minus two, right? Remember we had in uh, the sequence of all numbers, we had n minus one, but here I have two n, which means sequence only even ones and minus two, and then times two n. So this is even factorial. For odd factorials, general form, two n plus one. If I put this way, it's, it's already gonna be odd, right? Because plus one. It's gonna be one, times three, times five, yes, times two n minus one, because add one we are dealing with, and it's gonna be two n plus one. Okay, that's all. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in next video.